Thank you very much. Let me, let me take this opportunity to, to maybe tell you a little bit about my life real quickly. I am the uh, uh, proud father of two little girls. Their ages are seven and nine. I live next door to my brother. He has three children. They are all girls. Their ages are five, seven, and nine. My mother has nine grandchildren. They are all girls. The oldest one is 11 years old. I live in the estrogen ocean <laughs> in the middle of the naked Barbie Woodstock. <laughs> naked Barbies as far as the eye can see. There's days I have fantasies about being G.I. Joe on a three-day pass. You know? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Guess who just got paid? <laughs> but I, I tell you something else. I've learned a lot about girls. And one of the things I've learned is girls can sometimes be a little bit more emotional than boys. Y'all, I, I spend half my life trying to figure out what people are crying about. <laughs> I'm like, honey, honey, calm down. Calm down and, and just tell me what happened. Well, I came in and I was going to go upstairs and play with them, but then they locked the door and they called me a stupid head and they said I couldn't be in their club and I was looking for you and I was calling you and calling you. I'm like, honey, calm down. You're going to scare the children. Now just tell me what happened. Because <laughs> men have no idea what to do with a crying girl. And it doesn't matter if she's 5 or 25 or 75. See, men have no idea because we've been taught all our lives not to cry. That's why when we grow up, we can be out cutting firewood with our buddies. We'll take that chainsaw, saw our leg off at the knee. We're like, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. <laughs> Throw the leg in the cooler, hand me a beer, I'm all right. <laughs> and I'll tell you something that I have learned from these kids. Kids today are so much smarter than we were growing up. My oldest daughter, on her fifth birthday, asked for and got a computer. Five years old, gets a computer. She can use it right out of the box. A computer, five years old. Remember what we got when we turned five? <laughs> Little wooden paddle with a rubber band and the red ball on the end of it? That was a brain builder, wasn't it? One, two, three, one, two, three, one. You'd hit it about four times, the rubber band would snap, the ball would fly across the room, break something, and you get a spanking with the paddle. <laughs> no wonder we turned out this way. <laughs> oh, and nowadays you can't even spank your kids. No, gotta give them a time out. <laughs> my dad would take time out of his busy day to whip our butts, man. <laughs> but truthfully, there are a ton of things that have changed for kids in just like a generation. I was doing a, uh, a TV show not long ago, and they were asking, it was kind of more serious questions. And one of them, they said, what's your earliest recollection in life? And I thought about it, and I said, well, I, I remember being about three years old, and I'm standing on the front seat of the car with my dad, and every time he would turn the corner, I would make the sound of tires squealing. You know, like, <laughs> My dad would go, quit squealing my tires. All of a sudden, it dawned on me, what was I doing standing on the front seat of the car? <laughs> See, back in those days, kids weren't too good to go through the windshield with the rest of the family. <laughs> Lord, I can't back out of the driveway without my children being in car seats with shoulder straps and safety fits. Think back, I can vividly recall riding all the way to Florida, laying in the back window of the car. <laughs> People behind us going, Harold, is that one of those bobbing dogs? <laughs> now, that's a skinny kid with a big head. Boy, what a big head. My dad slammed on the brakes. You go bounce around the car like a pinball game. <laughs> Ended up face first in a full ashtray. <laughs> yeah, because that was back before secondhand smoke, too. <laughs> dad of winter, my parents had every window in the car rolled up there in the front seat smoking like it's a contest. <laughs> Our car looked like the Cheech and Chong mobile. <laughs> the only kid in kindergarten with a smoker's cough. Could I please have a crayon? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I remember as a child, my mother used to leave me, my brother, and my sister in the car while she ran into the grocery store real fast. If you did that to a poodle now, they would fry you on the six o'clock news. 
And I'll tell you something else. Now that I'm grown and have kids of my own, I understand why my mother didn't want to take three youngins in the grocery store. <laughs> I would rather take a beating with a brick stick than take kids in the grocery store. Because as soon as those doors slide open, those kids start begging like homeless people at Christmas time. <laughs> And somebody with little kids, what's the worst aisle of the grocery store? Try to get those kids down. Cereal. Cereal aisle. You know why? Because little kids buy cereal the same way grown men buy lingerie. <laughs> they will buy stuff they care nothing about just to get the prize that's inside. Everything's changed. Even their toys have changed. Like I noticed last Christmas, every toy my daughter's getting now, it's got little tags in it showing you somebody has inspected it to make sure there's no possible way a child could hurt themselves playing with that toy. I remember being nine years old, my parents bought me a wood-burning kit. <laughs> hey, what could possibly go wrong with a toy like that? A sharp metal stick that heated up to 5,000 degrees. And I'll tell you something, our dogs and cats didn't have a little tag around their neck, but everybody in the neighborhood knew who they belonged to. <laughs> yeah, the Circle F brand, that's Foxworthy cat right there. <laughs> what were they thinking? Some of the toys they gave us. Lawn darts. 12-pound <laughs> darts. You could kill an elk with a lawn dart. And there were no directions to them. They just came in a box of eight. We used to pull them out of the box, throw them straight up in the air. You catch one of those with your head, you're getting coloring books for Christmas the rest of your life. I got latches on cabinets to keep my daughters out of the dishwashing detergent. My parents gave my brother and I a chemistry set. Mom, Joey put ammonium sulfate in my eye. Tell him I said stop. <laughs> you boys go play with the wood burning kid. <laughs> Better yet, go outside, get on the mini bikes, and shoot the BB guns. <laughs> and listen, don't take candy from strangers unless they offer you a ride. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you so very much. More Jeff Foxworth. Where we go to church on Sundays, church on Mondays. Tuesdays, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Funerals on Saturdays and back to church on Sundays. <laughs> because Americans are always saying things that there's not that much proof for. You hear us say things like, uh, we're number one. 